Alright, I'm gonna show you the microphone point 2020 stone rocks cube glitch for money in real life for free. You the phone, computer, and my video for this. I count a day, wasting a lot of time, and a subscription to my channel. The the last one was a joke. <laughs> Basically, there are three steps to photogrammetry. Number one, go outside and find an object. Number two, hope it's cloudy. Number three, get your ass home and let your computer just do the work. Uh, what the fuck, bro? So basically, I found a spot. It's somewhere over there. And you pretty much just need a stone. Uh, let's say, I don't know what looks good. Just take a lot of pictures of that one stone object whatever get everything to iso get it to like a normal number fairly high shutter speed so it's not going to be blurry if you shake it a little too much and out of focus yeah so you can turn it on and uh, white button should be glued to one setting so the color isn't going to be off and now just find a like rock just take a lot of pictures like this one for example let me just oops, try it with that well, basically you want to get close as close as possible to it, to the rock right now, and just take an image, move it a bit, and you want like 30% well, overlaps, so it can figure out where the camera travel to, which with the rock is a little more easy. I'm gonna do that real quick. Find small details like this little part right here. You might want to take a couple more images like this, 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 because yeah, you definitely need the detail for that because it's a small detail. A rough surface like that is probably okay if you just take a couple pictures of that. Open your browser. Then Google Meshroom and accept that you're not a robot. Then click alicevision.org. Yeah, it's it's not meshroom.com. It's just alicevision.org for some reason. Then go to Meshroom and then download it either for Windows or Linux. Done that? Well, install it. It's not an actual installer. I just threw it to my C location and program files. Made a folder, threw it in there. After that, I right click the Meshroom XE and created a shortcut for the desktop. Let's just jump in. And that is what you're going to see. And, well, it kind of looks like Blender with all those notes down there. Let's first get our images. So I saved them on my desktop because I am lazy. Just get all those images and throw them into Meshroom to the left drag and drop folder. Basically, there are not that many things you have to keep in mind. Number one, feature extraction. That depends on how you shot the images. If you don't have that many images, you probably need a ultra describer preset because that will just figure out, oh, there's a rock. And in this image, there's this rock again. That's that's pretty much it. And the lower that is, the less features it's trying to look for. And if it's an ultra, it's gonna look for a lot. Then we can jump ahead to the depth map and the downscale. Two means those two numbers will get divided by two. So 4160 will turn into 2080 and 3120 will turn into 1560, which means less details. So if you want a lot of details, well, we gotta go to one because that downscale is not existent. And if you don't need a lot, well, we can go down to 16. And I'm just gonna choose this one. We can pretty much ignore depth map, meshing, mesh filtering, however the textures, there we go again, texture downscaling. It's the same thing again, the lower the number, the more high res it is. Let's just choose 8. And then there's the texture size. Texture size is just the texture size of the texture. Now there are a couple things to keep in mind. Unwrap method. Basic means it will create multiple textures if the size of the texture isn't enough to cover all the mesh. And those two won't do that. It only will create one texture, however, but are limited to a certain amount of faces. So you can't have a really high res mesh, sadly. I'm a stick to basic, because I'm a basic bitch. Uh, I'm gonna keep it to, I don't know, let's say 2000 just for the video. Then ignore use them. We can fill the holes, so if there are holes in the mesh, it will fill them. And correct expression we can kind of ignore that. Let's do the math on the first thing. Let's just right click the structure from motion and compute. Hello there. And oh, we have to save it, of course. So let's save it as something and do it again. And the whole thing should be kind of fast, at least till the structure from motion. After structure from motion, it'll take way longer per node, especially the depth map. 
that'll take a long time to compute. And when it's done, we have a point cloud with all the cameras around. Um, yeah, don't panic, that's not the actual mesh. Uh, you can kind of change the size of the pixel uh, of the of the point clouds over here size of the cameras you don't really need it and you can see all 39 cameras are being used because it was 39 images and if you look at every single image right here you can see a green camera if that's a red thingy it meant that it couldn't figure out where the image is supposed to be if you don't see the point cloud on the right you just have to double click instruction for motion and it will appear right here you can turn it on Turn it off away, hide it and show it again and get rid of it if you don't really need it, which we don't. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and go to the depth map. Um, again, I'm going to scale it down by 16 because it's going to be fast and you're going to see a drastic difference between the thing I already uh, the thing I already the thing I already the thing I already simulate thing I already simulate the thing I already uh, I'm about to punch a tree and play Minecraft in real life, bro. The thing that my computer already computed, compute to the depth map. You might wonder why don't we need the instruction from motion anymore? Well, we got a depth map. So let's just choose one camera right here and press this button, which will let us view the depth map in 3D right over here. We're gonna click that and it's gonna take a bit of time till it's loaded in properly. If I clicked it right, I didn't. Did I? Oh, wait. We also got a compute depth map filter. Now that that's done, let's click this little cool button called the view depth map in 3D, which will let us do this. And again, we don't need the point cloud anymore because we have the depth map and we can see what this camera can see right here. There we go, we can see the depth map. Now it knows where stuff happens. The depth map pretty much just shows you the depth of the camera. So if you click this button, we can jump into the actual image and see, yep, it figured out where the rock is at. Now, usually this is a way higher resolution than just around 60,000. And there we go. That's one for you. It's 20 million, whatever this is. Look at how much stuff it is. Now that we have the depth map, we can mesh it, get the mesh filtering and the texturing done in one go. Let's just compute everything. And the texturing is done, but we don't see anything. Let me just double click the meshing so we can see the mesh. Look at that. That's the actual mesh, but it's unfiltered. So that's the filtered mesh with the same amount of polygons, but it looks a little cleaned up. And let's just load the textured version. Okay. That, that is the textured version. And it took pretty much like five minutes or so to compute this whole thing. It was pretty fast. And that's pretty much how you do it. Where's the file? Just go to the, well, file where you save the mesh room file. It'll create a extra folder. In here, you can see pretty much everything you just saw as notes. We probably only need the texturing. Go in here, there's a weird string. Don't ask me why, it's there. And there's an OBJ. We can double click it. There we go. The Microsoft Viewer will show us our object. It looks kind of low res because, well, I just wanted it to be low res. And here's the difference between 16x downscale and 1x downscale. So no actual downscale. Yeah. So it looks amazing. I gotta say. And I obviously tried it with a video. And that is the object from the video. Um, yeah, it looks, looks pretty okay. It was, I was recording 4K on my phone and computed it in a 1x downscale so no actual downscale and that is what it looks like it's it's okay but before you can actually compute the mesh you have to extract all the images out of the video i just open up the image resolve or premiere or blender whatever and render the video out as a image sequence it looks pretty good i would say maybe not the grass but we don't want the grass so let's open up blender delete everything go to file import and import an obj then locate the file you were just computing where is it and find the obj and there we go we got the obj we can enable the texture view and yep yep that is our object now it's off axis um that always happens. I don't know how to fix it so it doesn't happen, but it's not really that bad. Let's just 
get it to where we want it. Let's just rotate it. See the middle point is right here, but yeah, it's kind of weird. So there we go. Now it's in the middle. Then press Control A and click on all transformations. Now we only want the main rock. So let's go into edit mode and press T for the tools. Go to the select box thingy and select, select lasso. Deselect everything by pressing A twice and just select our rock. That's what we want. Just that thingy right here, I think. There we go. Then press Control I to invert it and delete all the faces. And we got our rock, pretty much. We can obviously clean it up a bit more, but that is on you, I would say. Now, the high resolution rock looks pretty good, but what about the performance? So it uses about 5.3 million faces, which is a lot. And when rendering, it eats up 4.3 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, what about generating the mesh? It took about 24 gigabytes, for me at least, of RAM. So you probably only need like 16 or so. And that's how easy it is to, well, do some photogrammetry. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment down below why you didn't like it, why you did like it. And if you loved it, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to never miss an upload of mine. Bye. By the way, at 99 subscribers, maybe you can be number 100.